Welcome back to the Diecast Museum. Today I have a giant load of green light that I just purchased from my local Diecast store, and I am going to review two complete brand new sealed boxes. One of the Dually Drivers Series 7. These are the latest to come out at the time of filming, July 2021. And I've got Hollywood Series 31 with a whole bunch of awesome cars in it that I think you're going to enjoy. And everything is coming out of the package for a full review. This is basically cars and coffee in 164th scale. So grab yourself a cup and enjoy the show. All right, guys. So I'll bring you up to speed. I've already opened up the Greenlight Dually Drivers Series 7. There was no green machine in that box. And I lost the footage, hence why I'm refilming it without the opening of that box. But I've got all these six awesome trucks out for a full review with you guys. And I do still have the Hollywood Series 31 box. I did crack it open. I got one car out and maybe still a chance of a green machine in there before I lost the footage. And so we're going to get the rest of those cars out. Uh, these two cars are from that series and were my favorite. So I bought duplicates. That's why they're already out. And then I've got just this bonus round, this very weathered looking 83 Chevrolet Silverado C10. And that is from the Detroit Speed Inc. Series 2. Only got one of the vehicles out of that set as the rest were muscle cars that I do have quite a few of already in my collection. But let's go in for a closer look at these, the best trucks really. Dually drivers. Look at these classic 1970 and 68 Chevy C30 Dualies. We're going to get these out. And go over the uh, fine details without the plastic in the way. But this Ford F-350 Dually, a 2019 Ruby Red with uh, two-tone stone gray, also absolutely awesome. These are all metal on metal. True 164 scale. A variety of work trucks. And my favorite, the Waste Management 2018 Ram 3500 Dually stake truck. We're going to see more Waste Management vehicles with that livery on them coming from Greenlight. In fact, I have Series 12 of the SD trucks, which will be coming out for a review in the next couple of days. So look for that as well, as well as Hitch and Toe, the newest stuff there. So you really don't want to miss it. Now, just before we open up all these vehicles, I'll give you the once around on the packaging because it is pretty cool. And uh, if you are an in-package collector, then these things are quite nice to just leave in the package as well. If that's up to you and you get a nice, clear, undamaged package, uh, you've got the whole list of vehicles, all six on the back, but pretty much not too much else. As for the Hollywood series, well, all the packaging's different on those cars, specific to each car that you're going to get, including, like, for this awesome 93 Ford Crown Victoria. I just love it. I had to limit myself to buying just two of those, including the one that's going to be in the case, because I could easily have started a hoard there. Same goes for the 82 Dodge Diplomat. And why? Why these two? Well, I love my big old four-door cars. You guys know that. I did buy out the last of these two vehicles here, these weathered trucks. And uh, good old Aurelia Diecast. If you're local to Ontario, check them out on Facebook. And uh, you too can purchase from them. It's quite convenient. So check that out if that makes sense for you. If you live somewhere else, well, check out for your local Diecast stores and keep those small industries alive, those small businesses alive. But let's get right into this. Love the mix of these uh, older and newer trucks mixed together. I mean, that's what they've been doing for, I think, a little while. But uh, we're seeing more and more classic trucks come into the mix. All right, I'm going to crack one open for you on camera because maybe some people like seeing that. Just one. It's always exciting. It's kind of like Christmas when you, first of all, find new product. And second of all... Even more like Christmas when you can open it up and play with it. And that is what I intend to do with these Dually drivers as we take them over to the uh, 164 scale Junkyard Diorama for their full and final functional review. <laughs> Always fun, but look at this. Looks really good. This one has a metal satin painted black chassis. And uh, just really nicely detailed with those big toe mirrors on it. Extended out. It's a huge truck. The camera can't even focus on it all at once. Given that we are looking at a small scale vehicle. These are essentially Hot Wheels scale. So there's my there's a Hot Wheel I had nearby. A little Ford Aerostar van. Going to the waste management junkyard. 
<laughs> All right, the next vehicle we're going to get out. Let's check out that first most expensive and glamorous truck that you could get in real life probably out of this bunch while well, excluding all the cost of the rear attachments on these utility type trucks but look at this beautiful 2019 ford f-350 dually let's zoom in so we can get full clarity on all of its details now this of course a completely unbiased review although i am uh, i love collecting green light you know me, I'm not shy to talk about any quality control issues that I see. And I have to say, so far in my preliminary looking at all the vehicles I have here on the table for you, I have noticed that Greenlight may actually be listening to their um, their customers lately, which obviously includes me in sort of a public way. I have seen that the headlights, and you will see on all of the trucks here, are actually, uh, the flashing is no longer an issue. They're really nicely set in there for the most part and uh, no no auxiliary flashing that we were seeing in some of the earlier dually drivers releases the uh windshields are much clearer they're not they're not clean yet i'm not going to say they're clean they're still quite oily on the inside and uh, the occasional fingerprint or speck of dirt but on the outside uh, a little better and nothing serious so that's that's good the wheels and tires are all uh so far from what i can see straight and not misaligned or i mean sometimes there's been problems with that but overall green light quality has been going up and up and obviously they produce a lot more vehicles now so it would make sense that they make them good quality so they actually sell on the shelves and that seems to be uh what's going on here so so far looking pretty good what do you guys think of this truck let me know in the comments i mean personally i think it is a fantastic representation and uh, truly glorious in this two-tone color. Does come with that hitch and tow hitch. I think a lot of these vehicles do actually, all of them but the old wreckers that we have in the background, uh, which I've already gone ahead and opened up. So let's go and look at a classic now. And that is the 1968 Chevrolet C30 Dually Wrecker in white. Uh, slight misalignment between the cab and the, the uh, tow back, but that could be probably fixed pretty easily just with a little bit of a well, maybe not, but it's not so bad that I, I actually have a problem with it. And the intricate details that Greenlight has managed to put on these trucks is truly fantastic. Now, these are very fragile. When you open them from the package, it doesn't take much to uh, break a little plastic strand or uh, knock a little light off. You can use them as toys just fine once you've broken off all the little bristly details. Uh, but anyways, this is a really cool truck. It's got a uh, a separate piece cast hood it does not open on this model. We've seen this model uh, with camper attachments on the back, various attachments over the years, so I'm not going to even try picking at it. But I bought two of these ones simply because I thought, hey, that's a nice one to put your own stickers on. If you're into that, you got a nice blank white slate. And I think Greenlight does that intentionally every once in a while with maybe a new model so that people can have that opportunity to, to really... Uh, Try out some customs, perhaps, or, you know, whatever you want. It's all white anyways, and then that's why I bought two, because I, I thought, hey, maybe I'll do a, maybe I'll do a custom uh, scrap truck for my junkyard, Sam Salvage, you know. That's the name of the uh, diorama scrapyard that we're going to be heading to after we look at all these vehicles here on the review table. We're looking at wreckers, so let's look at this other wrecker. I did just go ahead and pre-snip some of the packages, but... For the background effect, I did uh, kind of leave them in their packaging. And uh, look at this beauty. So pretty much the same truck as the one we just looked at in black. So there's a year variation here, so there might be some subtle grill differences behind that push bar. It appears that there is a slight grill variation from 68 to 70. On the back, you're not going to find anything different, but some very detailed mud flaps on this one, which we didn't see on the white version. So these are the Texaco uh, gas station. Livery on the side, 24-hour service. Beautiful truck, lovely paint job. No issues on any of the paint so far. Very nice and shiny. And... Uh, so quite happy with that. I did give this one a little bit of a blue microfiber before I opened it up. 
pre-inspection, so uh, that's why it is a little bit shinier. They do come out a little goopy, but you know, you get that little microfiber rag out and you just very lightly, you don't want to create any swirls, just like in real life. Give it a little buff. Make sure it's a nice, clean, new rag when you do that. You don't want to start with an old, dirty one. Okay, let's go to a much newer Chevrolet now. This one is the 2018 Chevrolet Silverado 3500 Dually Service Bed, Illinois Tollway. So you're going to find this in the United States of America on the large tollways of Illinois, is what I'm gathering from that. Now, here again, another super high quality model from Greenlight with uh, definitely a much improved headlight system than what I think I've seen in the past on these trucks. We've got very good fitting headlights, a very nicely, uh, they're very well oriented. There's no flashing, as I said, on this model either. Different model than the Ford, obviously. We're looking at a Chevy now. Those nice big mirrors. Now, these are solid hard mirrors. They're not like the ones on the Mini GT type cars that are flexible. So, you know, if you knock one of those, they're glued on to the metal casting. They're plastic mirrors. You're going to want to try and find it and maybe uh, glue it back on. doesn't happen too often unless you're rough with them or you drop them or something like that. Now, these are big, so they're not going to fit in those kind of Plano cases I have in the background with all the Hot Wheels that are coming into focus there. Even this truck that I'm going to look at you in a second with you in a second, it won't fit there unless it's up on an angle in one of the one of the few big cubbies that are available. So keep that in mind that when you display these, you almost need like a little shelf or something, which uh, is pretty much what I do. And I'll show you at the end of this video kind of what happens with all these trucks. But very nice paint job. I mean, look at all the details on this thing. There's no slips or misses on these uh, models. And at, you know, $10, $15 Canadian is what I pay for these. That is not bad, guys. I mean, this is pretty good quality from Greenlight. So I hope they keep it up. I really do like what they're doing here. And uh, I love the mixture of trucks here. We've got old and new and a variety of uh, service beds on them. So what do we have here? The 2015 Ram Dually 3500 crane truck from the port of Miami, Miami, Florida, Miami Tunnel, it says. So uh, Trans Shield, Trans Field Services. I don't know. I, I almost suspect that these are actual company liveries on here. So I'm not sure if Greenlight's partnered up with some of that or if they're just really creative with making uh, this sort of livery for these vehicles. Look at that non insulating crane. The crane itself has got the bolts painted on it, for heaven's sakes. These are so nicely detailed. Again, you got a hitch for the Hitch and Toe series trailers. You can pull some a contractor trailer or something like that. One of the many trailers that Greenlight has in those series. But uh, this one, this one actually has a plastic base, which only a few of them do have. I think that's a cost cutting measure to keep the overall uh, cost of the set down a little bit. This one's obviously all metal, but it's got a plastic back. Well, this one's plastic too. So the only big truck with a metal base is the Ford, but that's fine. I mean, these other trucks have these, they're, they're about the same weight anyways, because the back service bed is just so heavy and bulky and uh, these little trucks well they have metal bases too so that's really nice because they're very heavy and i like that so we've got the dually driver series seven brand new guys that's going to be coming out uh on the junkyard here towards the as this video progresses we're going to see where these trucks fit in in this 164 scale junkyard but before we do that we've still got one more case to open up and that is the Hollywood Series 31. And I've also got this awesome Detroit Speed Inc. Series 2 truck. So this is a brand, well not brand new, second wave from this series. Pretty new stuff. I think it was launched in the spring of 2021. Uh, we've got the 83 Chevy Silverado C10. I think I probably said that already. Uh, collect the whole series. Well, there's the rest of the vehicles. As you can see, mostly muscle cars. Uh, you got the 2012 Camaro test car. Uh, 72, uh, 70 Camaro, 70 Chevelle, 70 Camaro. These are all Chevys. So it's a series of, of Chevys in this uh, Detroit Speed. And uh, so you can see there's a little bit of a story on those. Now, of course, I have so many Greenlight cars and I buy so many Greenlight cars. I'm not sponsored, so I have to really pick and choose sometimes. And that's why I ended up just with this one. 
but I think you guys will agree, if you're a truck lover anyways, that this was the Chevy to pick up from that set. Um, absolutely fantastic details on it. Let's see if we can get that focus to work. But check it out. I mean, very, very awesome work at the paint booth in the 164 scale green light department to get this sort of finish on it. I mean, look, you got like some dried out red paint. That's that's not grease or anything. That's just like fantastic weathering on the tailgate of this truck. If we zoom right in, of course, it's all metal. Nice straight tires. And even the trim on the sides, like silver black, silver black. It's just really amazing what the machinery can do these days when uh, the quality control is behind it. And uh, they've obviously at Greenlight invested in some good paint machinery to be able to do paint jobs like this and offer them to us at a reasonable price. So really like that. I can't wait to see more of these. I would love to see a weathered truck in or car in every mix like at least one um back in the johnny lightning days of when i was collecting a lot of johnny lightning cars and still do the only one i ever pick up is the dusty dirty one at this point from these cars because they're not true 164 scale this is also a brand new release that i got uh, at the at the store so it's not a green light but it just goes to show you what these companies can do with some good weathering and um well, the rest of the cars, well, they're all shiny, I think, in this one. Different, uh, but we're not reviewing this. We're just looking at paint jobs. So that will be reviewed at a future date. But I really just have the one car. So got all that out. We're pretty much ready to get into this case here, which we're going to do live with you to see if there's a green machine hiding in there. Just got to get all these trucks out of the way. Now, we do know that these two cars are in there already, and all these are going to get opened up in just a moment. And the first car that I pulled out before I lost the footage in the first round of filming was the 73 AMC Matador from Gone in 60 Seconds. Now, we're going to look at each just quick here because the packaging is all different in the Hollywood series. Probably one of my uh, favorite series of cars is the Hollywood series of cars from Greenlight. So far, they've... Got a good steady mix of four-door cars and uh, relevant relevant movie material or television material. Stuff that interested me in my life, uh, being born in 83, so I'm like 38 years old now. And I used to love watching the X-Files. I still do every once in a while. Great stuff. I can, I can just picture Mulder and Scully driving down some... Uh, spooky <laughs> country road in this big old 93 Ford Crown Victoria. Now, nothing on the back here for the X-Files show, but I think everyone knows what's going on with the X-Files. So we've got two Crown Vicks to open up. Oh, and we've got Nina in the house. She's just circling around my feet, but let's just keep this video rolling. Uh, 68 Chevy Nova from Bad Boys 2. Orange with the uh, dual stripes. And uh, a little bit about that. Oh, look at more reference to Miami drug. And there we go. The other 82 Dodge Diplomat that I'm going to be opening up. I mean, the reason why I really like buying these cars in duplicate. I didn't buy a duplicate of the Matador, even though it's a four-door. Is because these two cars are civilian, just regular paint jobs that you would see. And that is also my absolute favorite feature of the green light cars is the more and more I'm seeing these four-door cars come out with the standard paint jobs, and you can make a fantastic-looking, realistic uh, cityscape with these cars if you open them up. And please, green light, please make a 1983 to 1986 Pontiac Bonneville. Ah, you'd be my savior. I love those cars, and I have two of them in real life, so I would love to see that car. But you know what? Everyone puts in a request. The Bonneville was a very uh, popular car, though, so... Maybe. Uh, here we go. 91 Ford Mustang GT from Home Improvement. Another another show I used to watch. There's uh, Wilson hanging out over the fence. And uh, the cast now all, of course, grown up. There's uh, Mr. Allen. I don't know all their names off. I, yeah, Tim Allen. I don't know all their names off by heart anymore. It's been so long. But, uh, yeah, that was a 
It's a dated show now. I don't know if anyone would actually watch it now. But 91 Ford Mustang GT. This is not a green machine. Sorry to keep you in suspense while I was rambling. All of these cars are painted this color. They're metallic green. Um, Two-tone. Very nice looking. I don't know where these cars actually fit in the show. I don't remember that. So it doesn't look like we've got a green machine in this box. But that's okay. That means I have all of the actual original paint colors to show you. So that's good. 69 Plymouth Roadrunner. I mean, that's good for some. It's good for me. I don't have to buy a duplicate. Pawn Stars. That's a more newer show. So, from the History Channel. And uh, that taking place, of course, in Las Vegas. That's where the Pawn Stars headquarters are. Pretty cool show. I always like watching Chum Lee. He's an entertaining one. Chum Lee and the old guy. So, uh, pretty good stuff. Let's get these cars out. Okay, we've got everything pre-cut here, and now we're going to open up all six cars from Hollywood. Series 31 in duplicate for the first two. One and two. Quality control check going on here. Got both of these cars fresh out of the package. I have not pre-opened these packages like I did with the dually drivers to check them over. So you're going to see what I see as they come out. So this 93 Crown Vic. And uh, right out of the package, pretty darn clean, guys. No fingerprints. They've got that center uh, pillar where the doors meet figured out. No issues with the paint on that, as we saw in the first release of this car, which I believe was a cop car, and that was quite a while ago. The last re release that I think I purchased was a gold uh, version from either Hobby Shop or... Yeah, it was the Hobby Shop car. So we have just saw it there with the... Uh, now, these hoods do open, but as you can see, the tolerances are very tight. Come on. No. Yeah, there we go. Sometimes just give it a spanking on the bottom of the hood, the engine bay, and uh, away you go. Detailed engine in there. I mean, you could put a little bit more uh, colors in there if you really wanted to, but all the components that you need pretty much are there, I think. So that looks pretty good. You got a little license plate on it. Great little headlights. This is exactly what these cars look like. Perfect stance. The wheels fit the wheel wells just right. Got the authentic uh, alloy wheels on this car. And uh, just all the way around. Very nice. So both these cars are in good shape. Not seeing any uh, issues at all with these cars. So very nice to see. Our first two cars out of the bunch in uh, perfect condition. Next two that we're opening up. Beverly Hills Cop 82 Dodge Diplomat. Let's see what we've got here. And uh, I think the last time I got this car, it was also part of the Hollywood series, and it was in white, all white. So let's zoom in so we can keep the focus on the car and not wandering in and out. And uh, if, if that works, camera, are you going to work? Good. So, I mean, obviously you can use a little shine up, especially on the dark cars. You know, it goes a long way to just give that grease uh, a little wipe right off the bat. The grease is harmless, even if you keep the cars in the package. It's designed to think. See, it's, it's some sort of manufacturing process. Uh, either that or it's to ensure the car doesn't get scratched in the uh, shipper bubble. in its little packaging on its way to you. Samsung Galaxy 10 is due for an upgrade, obviously, in 2021. It's time to get a 30, I think. But look at these taillights uh, detailing. Right down to the little key lock that would swivel out of the way so you could put your key in the trunk and open it up. Put a couple bodies in there because there's definitely room. I'm just joking. But, I mean, if you saw it in the Beverly Hills movie, that's probably uh, a possibility. So... Very cool car. Like the way they've done the headlights. The way the headlights attach is through two pins by the looks of it. Those tiny little clear lenses glued in place. So fantastic detailing. And these cars truly did have kind of a squat to them, especially when loaded with passengers. So it was normal to see these cars with the wheels up in the wheel wells like that. Uh, really soft ride on these cars in real life. And a very durable car that continued to persist well into the 2000s as a regular car I see on the roads. Uh, when I do see vintage cars, that is, that are just being driven. Survivors, I guess. Uh, 
economical car for someone or perhaps just someone nostalgic that wants to drive an older car into the ground even so very cool car let's go for the uh let's go for the home improvement car next we'll switch it up a little bit save the last uh, three as you can see the uh, 91 ford mustang gt now also a very cool model really like this model that they have better put that packaging back for the focus okay maybe not Anyways, looks like we may have a slight quality control issue here on the tail light, but let's not get hung up on that first. Let's look at the car overall because it is a beauty and uh, opening hood on this model as well. So you can see some details in there, mostly black plastic engine components, crisp fitting hood and uh, pretty decent, pretty decent. It's got a little bit of spring to it. But that's nothing really worth complaining too much about. Nicely detailed interior, as you can see. You can zoom right in that window and check out the, uh, the console, the shifter, the dashboard. I like the two-tone gray seats with the black dash. But what's going on here? Got the wheels spin nicely. Tires are on there pretty good. And if not, you can kind of adjust them just like that. But we do have uh, one of these detailed little tail lenses that seems to have maybe just popped popped out ever so slightly it's not a big deal i can pick this light off and re-glue it if i really wanted to so let's go on to the amc matador pretty cool old car that you'll see in those old movies getting destroyed by the hundreds in some case and uh nice gloss black paint job the old panda bear car as they called these in the day we got pandas Got pandas coming. That says Los Angeles County Sheriff with the license plate. And uh, very nicely uh, fit windows on this model, as you can see. This piece of plastic that represents the windows is actually inserted into the metal uh, body of the car before assembly, obviously. But they've got it to fit in around the metal pillars of the roof perfectly. And also... All of that silver plastic, uh, the silver trim around the windows is lined up very nicely. Windshield wipers as well. Great light bar on this thing. So, fantastic quality control, actually. Uh, quite happy with these green light models today. And that's good because I bought about $350 with a green light just the other day. So, that's good. It makes me feel better about my purchase, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's best when everything is makes you happy and you're not just wiping it off the table in disgust. Sometimes that has happened in the past, but it certainly hasn't happened for a while. And uh, green light's headed in the right direction, as I said. Another opening hood on this gorgeous Chevy Nova. Got some details. Nice details under the uh, hood of this car. Look at all the stuff we've got going on. Batteries painted, hoses painted, reservoir tank, various parts of the uh, air intake. Very nice job. Now we do have a bit of a wobbly tire, but look at that's so easy to fix. Once they're out of the package, that is. Oh well, no, we've got a slight wobble on the wheel too, so it's been drilled incorrectly. This one might be ending up in the junkyard. But you know, you might be able to straighten that out. Just bend it with your kind of bend that axle. These wheels do come right off the axles and you can redo that, but I'm not gonna bother. It's actually I've managed to straighten it just by Straight a little better, at least it'll spin. Still gonna look great. Uh, well, I'm not gonna put it down, it'll be out of sight. It'll look great on the shelf. And that's pretty much mostly what happens with these cars. So that's uh, that's okay. Nice clear windows all the way around. No fingerprints, woo wee. All metal. Yeah, that's a nice car. And the last one coming out from the Pawn Stars. We got the Plymouth Roadrunner, so let's leave the zoom in. Okay, now this one also features an opening hood. So we've got a good mix of cars here. One, two, half the cars here have opening parts and all are 100% metal. So that is really nice to see. Roadrunner is one of my favorite cars, so that's why I picked up the whole case. Got a red line, uh, the white lines and the red lines on these tires are always troublesome for green light. So that's unfortunate when you get a red tire that stripe that's all weird and wrecked like that you'd think they'd be able to get these things lined up because there's really no other manufacturer that struggles so badly 
with these uh, tire issues with the white wall lines. And you see it on any car basically that has that uh, pinstripe around the tire. This one's actually wheels were a little bit off, but they really uh, they really tend to struggle to get those centered. That car is actually not that bad. I thought I saw one of these ones. This one's not bad. So this one's just, this one's got two tires on it that are really bad and one that's pretty bad. Actually, they're all pretty bad. They're all very bad. So I'm going to turn all these tires around on this car, which I will probably accomplish just by taking them right off the rim. And uh, switch them around because I don't know about those red tire lines being that crooked. It just doesn't look right. So it can be done very easily when you have the car out of the package. Now, if it's in the package, you might not even notice because of the glare of the plastic and all that other interference. But this is a quick way to accomplish any unsightly uh, tire lines is simply just to turn the tire around so you don't have that awkward red kind of circle. So there the cars are on the table. Let's see what they look like in the junkyard now. All right, it's time to check out Sam's salvage yard and see what has come in. Some of these cars we've already seen in reviews past, including this uh, jean, blue jean version of the Ford F-350 that we just saw in this most recent release. And I've already sprinkled the vehicles around the junkyard, so let's go find them. First, we've got the Texaco tow truck. You know, the mixture of service vehicles. Got that white tow truck as well. The Dodge Diplomat. Behind the Matador. In a line of other junked vehicles with a foray of military surplus scrap getting shredded by the uh, material handler. And behind of which we can find a newly acquired Chevy pickup truck. The Weathering. Parked in with a whole bunch of other stuff. And uh, where are the rest of these vehicles? There's uh, the previous released Hobby Shop Crown Victoria that we saw in gold now. And the Hollywood, 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 the Hollywood Solid Pack Dodge Diplomat in like a pearly blue gray. Here's where a whole bunch of the vehicles have ended up, though. Let's just do a broad zoom out from the other end of the Sam Salvage Yard, which is hosting a mud truck event, by the looks of it in the background. Previously reviewed um, Kings of Crunch trucks there. And then we've got the service vehicles here. Just uh, They've just been serviced at the scrapyard, and uh, they're just parking them there for now. But there, of course, that brand new... F-350 marching through the junkyard. We've got the second weathered Chevy truck over here with the remainder of the Hollywood cars. Exception to the Matador, which we already looked at. Two Crown Vicks entered the yard. Something wrong with that uh, Mustang. They're going to check the engine over. Looks like the uh, Nova's in good shape and ready to go. A uh, couple more cars, but yeah, the Roadrunner couldn't be saved. So... They popped the tires off it. Someone did. Probably had to crawl under it and pull off a catalytic converter or something. I don't even know if those cars came with that, actually. Probably not. Um, but yeah, I just peeled all the tires off it, and now it's in the junkyard. So that's what happens with cars that have crooked wheels, crummy tires. Or I flip them around, like I said, put them on the display. Speaking of which, I was going to tell you, how do I display all of these larger vehicles? specifically the dually drivers so we'd have to take a little walk into the remainder of the museum to figure that out which we will do and uh, now the aerial view of sam salvage yard and we're on our way out so let's uh head out into the museum and see where those dually drivers end up so here we are in a different uh, room, the extension to the Diecast Museum, where all the green lights are stored, as well as M2 and Auto World. I have a few M2 trucks that were too big to fit into any of these Plano case cubbies, so they just hang a wheel off the top. 
And when I put my planos on the wall, right up at the top here, I've got low ceilings, only about seven foot ceilings, but you can see a whole bunch of M2 trucks just hanging a wheel. And then over at the top of this wall, I've got my uh, Dually Driver Series trucks. You can just see the size of them compared to the other appropriately scaled green light vehicles. So they all just get lined up. I leave about an inch and a half or two at the top of my Plano cases when I install them on the walls. And of course, if you haven't seen these Plano cases before or wondering all about them, I do have a separate video how I display my Hot Wheels cars or diecast cars, something like that. It's an old video, but it's still relevant for how to put these uh, cases on the wall. And they fit a variety of vehicles. They're called Plano cases, and the model number is 5324. You can find them on Amazon and sometimes in your local stores, although that has not been the case for me lately. I used to be able to get them at Walmart. They still only cost about nine dollars on amazon free delivery if you're a prime member if uh if you wait out for a sale which they do go on sale every once in a while otherwise they're about twenty dollars which is way too much probably in my opinion unless you're in a real hurry so just a common question i thought i'd answer look at all the dodge or no i thought those were diplomats look at all the caprice classics we've got over here so many cars there's some matadors where are those dodge diplomats well, thanks for tuning in, guys, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. I love reading comments. I'm a little behind right now, but I always get to them. And, of course, happy hunting. Take care of yourselves and each other. We'll see you soon in the next video.